Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We will begin the fifth Wigo General Assembly shortly. So please check your settings for your participation in the event. And ladies and gentlemen, those who don't have any earphones or speakers ready for now, please lower your volume a little bit. And before we begin, I will make some um, important announcements. All VIP participants, mayors and vice mayors, uh, please kindly change your name to your affiliation and your full name in the parenthesis and make sure that your screens are on and your microphones are muted. A GA participants are advised to have their cameras turned on for the duration of the meeting and the General Assembly meeting will be recorded with live screens on throughout the meeting. In an avoidable case uh, that you have to turn off your camera for a short while, we advise participants to have your profile picture showing up on the screen. Instructions on how to do so can be found in the event program book under the how to participate section. And all materials used during the General Assembly will be shared after the event on the WeGo website. And ladies and gentlemen, during the session, we would like to provide the interpretation service both in Korean and English. So please select your preferred language in the bottom bar menu available in the Zoom platform. And lastly, please print out the WeGo 5th General Assembly image slogan for the closing ceremony. So ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have it ready, please have them um, on standby and please uh, print out before we take the photo all together for the closing ceremony. So ladies and gentlemen, we will begin the session shortly. So please wait until the opening ceremony. I will say hello shortly. Thank you so much for your participation and patience. Yeah. 
터질 때 너무 나 지쳐버려 작은 바람에 더운 이 심장이 부서질 때 I'll buy you stuff forever I'll buy your side forever 나는 이것을 위해서 너를 느낄 수 있어 I saw you 너와 내 사이에서 Oh so 그래 나 이곳에서 모든 걸 준비해 기대해 행복해질 테니까 Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? The opening ceremony of the 5th Uyghur General Assembly session will begin shortly, so please check your setting for your participation in our event. And I'd like to remind all of our participants that the event will be recorded, and all VIP participants, honorable governors, mayors, and vice mayors, and ambassadors, please kindly change your name to your affiliation and your full name in parentheses. And make sure that your screens are on and your microphones are muted. And GA per uh, participants are advised to have their cameras turned on for the duration of the meeting and general assembly meeting will be recorded with live screens on throughout the event. And if you have to leave and if, if you have to turn off your camera for a short while, we advise participants to have your profile picture showing up on your screen. Instructions on how to do so can be found in the event program book under the how to participate section. And ladies and gentlemen, all materials used during the General Assembly will be shared after the event on the WIGO website. Please refer to that information. And during the session, we would like to provide the interpretation service in Korean and in English. So please select your preferred language in the bottom bar menu available in the Zoom platform. Thank you very much for your cooperation, and we will begin the session shortly. Thank you. The COVID-19 pandemic, a disaster unprecedented in human history. We have sacrificed a lot, living uncomfortably under restrictions. During the pandemic, our way of life has become strange and stressful. However, this long agony is bringing about tremendous changes to our society. A catalyst, speeding up the digital transformation for both the public and private sectors. The world changed by Corona-19. What should we keep and what should we bury for a better future? Digital world is a journey, not a destination. On the way to a better future, Smart Soul will be always with you. Thank you so much for your participation today. And before we begin, I'd like to thank today's General Assembly's sponsors. B-Cloud, Hudim Robot, Toa Engineering, NAF, and SR Post, as well as our media partner, Smart Cities World.
Purim robot is reading the era of robot convergence and providing convenient robot services. With new value creation and continuous technology development, Purim robot is proud of its quality and is committed to give trust and satisfaction to its customers with its best product and services. Purim robot, the global robot maker, that extends beyond Korea to the world. This is the beginning of a great leap forward for the Hurim robot, which always puts customers first. NNF, Nature and Fiber. NNF specializes in production of polyester staple fibers. NNF manufactures products based on its own endless research and accumulated technology. Polyester staple fibers are not a finished product, but a semi-finished product. Polyester staple fibers can be categorized into several levels. NNF mainly manufactures high-quality fabrics. This is the polyester staple fiber manufacturing process. First, the ingredients are mixed. The moisture in the ingredients is eliminated. Then the ingredients are melted and passed through the nozzle in order to convert them into thread. After going through a process that regulates thickness, tensility, heat retention, elasticity, the last stage is the tenter process. This is the end of the production of the fiber and then the product is packed. Polyester staple fiber is used as interior material for various products. They are used to make mattresses, beds, sofa, or padding. It is also used in making felt or insulation material. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we'll now begin the 5th Wego General Assembly. Thank you very much for your patience. Honorable Governors, Mayors, and Vice Mayors, and Chief Technology and Information Officers, good afternoon. Now we will begin the fifth week of General Assembly, New Normal, with Smart Sustainable Solutions for All. So ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, we'd like to extend our sincere gratitude to all of our participants from home and abroad, despite your busy schedules. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jessica Lee, and uh, today I've given the honor of being the moderator for this special occasion. Thank you and welcome to our General Assembly. 
So before we begin with today's General Assembly sessions, I'd like to invite all of our participants to turn on their cameras and to take a virtual group photo all together. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to give you a few seconds to prepare for this group session. So please have your camera on standby and be ready for our shooting. Thank you. So I hope that everyone is ready for our virtual group session. So ladies and gentlemen, please look at the camera for um, about two to three seconds because we're doing this online. So I would like to count down from three to one. So please make a big, big smile. So you ready? Three, two, one. Thank you so much. A big smile. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'd like to welcome all of you to the 5th Wego General Assembly. Thank you for being with us today, um, even though we're meeting you online. Thank you very much for your presence. And first of all, I'd like to give you a brief overview of today's program. The General Assembly will consist of two sessions divided by a five-minute break in the middle. The first session of the program will be the 10th anniversary ceremony opening and it will consist of welcoming and congratulatory remarks and a keynote speech, followed by the fourth Wego Awards ceremony. And after having about a five minute break, we will come back for the second part of the program, which will cover the General Assembly agenda session, where Wego members will discuss and decide on key Wego agendas. And today's General Assembly actually has a very special meaning because it marks the 10th anniversary this year of WIGO. So we'd like to take a brief moment to look back on WIGO's development and extraordinary progress on the world stage by watching WIGO's 10th anniversary video. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get our attention to the screen. During the past 10 years since WIGO was established, the world has changed rapidly. Similarly, WIGO has also been transformed from an e-government organization to a platform for cities, institutions, and corporations working towards smart and sustainable urban development. Let us look back at these 10 years of our shared history. WIGO was inaugurated in 2010 by 50 city representatives in Seoul as the World E-Governments Organization of Cities and Local Governments. In 2011, WIGO launched its first training program for city officials to learn about e-government practices. Training programs have since then been a major part of WIGO's activities and have been organized yearly. On the theme of Smart Government for All, the second WIGO General Assembly was hosted alongside the Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona. The first WIGO Awards were also launched and held there. WIGO's Independent Secretariat was opened on April 11, 2014, which was a critical juncture in becoming the organization we are today. Also in 2014, the opening of WIGO's first two regional offices for Asia and Europe, located in Chengdu and Ulyanovsk region, were approved at the third WIGO General Assembly and opened shortly after. In 2015, WIGO's annual feasibility study program, which had been running since its establishment, had a pilot project component added to it for the first time enabling cities fully experience the smart solutions and how it solves the city's urban challenge. Responding to the changing landscape in the field, the fourth General Assembly approved the change of WIGO's mission and vision, widening the organization's focus from e-government only to smart and sustainable urban development. This new mandate was also reflected in the organization's name. The 
opening of two new regional offices for the Mediterranean region and Latin America were also approved at the fourth General Assembly and opened subsequently in 2017 and 2018. In 2019, WeGo began a path of major regional expansion by leading and taking part in many smart city initiatives around the world. Now, WeGo has over 200 members and is looking forward to growing even further. It is our part that makes us strong, and it is each one of you that makes us unique. All the experiences, partnerships, regional offices, and continuous support we received has shaped who we are. In the decade ahead, WeGo will continue pushing toward a smart and sustainable future for all citizens in all cities. By 2030, WeGo is determined to become synonymous with smart cities and a mover and shaker for urban development around the world. We have ambitious goals of expanding our regional presence, building a strong network of partners across every region, and making an impact for the citywide implementation of innovative projects. Thank you for being a part of this 10-year journey, and let's keep our community growing. Happy 10th anniversary to WeGo. Thank you so much. Um, I believe that that video was very meaningful that we could look back on Wigo's 10 year journey. Thank you very much. And with that, at this time, I'd like to welcome the president of Wigo and the mayor of Seoul, Mr. Oh Se Hun, for his opening remarks. So, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming him. Good afternoon, I'm Oseo Hun, Mayor of Seoul and President of WeGo. First of all, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the 213 member cities, organizations and corporations and all the participants of the 5th WeGo General Assembly. Back in 2010, when I was serving as the mayor of Seoul, I initiated the launch of WeGo together with 50 other mayors of cities all around the world to facilitate international exchange and cooperation in the e-governance field. Now, 11 years have passed, and WeGo has grown to become one of the largest global associations in the smart city field, with 213 countries, cities, organizations, corporations, as its members. I'm delighted and honored that Seoul is hosting the 5th WeGo General Assembly and opening up discussions of the future direction of smart cities amid the new normal era to celebrate the 10th anniversary of WeGo. The fourth industrial revolution and the COVID-19 pandemic have only made non-contact digital lifestyles all the more common and widespread. The changes brought about by smart technologies have transformed citizens' lives faster than the advent of the virus ever did. The paradigm of city administration is also undergoing a major shift based on smart technologies. The Seoul Metropolitan Government has proceeded accordingly with this global trend and has developed Seoul into a smart digital city in the transportation, safety, education and disease prevention, combining the public sector's smart administration with the private sector's cutting-edge smart technology. The SMJ through WeGo will continue to promote the sharing of experience and know-how in the field of smart city and the cooperation among cities around the world to bridge the digital divide and improve the quality of life of our citizens. I ask for your continued participation and support for WeGo becoming a first mover, driving the movement of change and innovation in the field of smart city. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor O, oh, for sending very meaningful messages. And now I'd like to invite the Mayor of Sao Paulo, Ricardo Nunes to deliver his congratulatory remarks. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him with a big round of applause. Caros prefeitos, governadores e todos os representantes de membros da WIGO aqui presentes. É uma honra me dirigir a vocês 
nesta ocasião tão especial, nessa Assembleia que marca os 10 anos da UIGO. Quero começar minha mensagem parabenizando e cumprimentando o prefeito de Seul, Ron Sihon, nosso anfitrião, por organizar esse evento e pela liderança inspiradora da UIGO que a cidade de Seul vem demonstrando. Como uma das cidades que ajudar a fundar essa organização, São Paulo se alegra e muito em ver o quão longe já chegamos. Um sucesso traduzido pelo número de membros que só cresce. O movimento das cidades inteligentes é uma realidade e uma tendência inevitável para as cidades que querem um futuro mais desenvolvido, ecológico e democrático para seus cidadãos. E a Uigo, cada vez mais, vem se firmando como uma líder dessa expansão. Ao mesmo tempo, sabemos os desafios de uma organização tão grande e diversa. Somos muito diferentes, de lugares distantes, com avanços tecnológicos diferentes. Mas o desejo da melhora nos une e é maior que qualquer barreira. Por isso, São Paulo espera que a Uigo invista mais em suas redes regionais, para que possa entender e se adaptar às diferentes realidades e necessidades entre os membros. Por aqui, a inspiração das cidades inteligentes orienta nosso trabalho para tornar o governo cada vez mais transparente, acessível e um promotor de bem-estar de todos. São Paulo entende que ser inteligente é ser rápido, ser acessível, ser efetivo e ser sustentável. Por isso, estamos modernizando o serviço público, digitalizando o governo, ampliando a participação eletrônica dos cidadãos nas escolhas dos rumos da cidade. Investimos em laboratórios públicos de inovação, os Fab Labs, premiados no quarto Eagle Awards pela inclusão e democratização do acesso à tecnologia de ponta. Somos um povo criativo e diverso, com muitas ideias boas por aí, prontas para melhorar a vida de milhares de pessoas só esperando as ferramentas certas. Pelo meio ambiente, nosso orgulho é o Hub Green Sampa, que leva o nome do querido prefeito Bruno Covas, que tanto se dedicou à causa da sustentabilidade. O Hub Green Sampa é um acelerador, oferecendo capacitação, acesso a financiamento, inserção no mercado e consultoria para startups de tecnologia verde. Acreditamos que a economia circular o uso consciente e sem desperdício de recursos naturais e a responsabilidade socioambiental são a nossa chance de deixar o mundo melhor para as próximas gerações. Em nome de todos os paulistanos, recebo um cordial abraço e meus votos de um evento produtivo e inspirador que vem os próximos 10 anos da Wigo. Forte abraço! Thank you so much for your uh, message, Mayor Ricardo uh, Nunes. And ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite the Deputy Governor of Banco, Kriangyu Sudlapa, to deliver his congratulatory remarks. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming him. Your Excellency, Mr. Oh Se Hun, Mayor of Seoul, Honorable Mayors and Governors, Distinguished Representative of WIGO Members, Administrators of WIGO, colleagues, friends, ladies, and gentlemen. I, Kriang Yot Sutlapa, Deputy Governor of Bangkok, on behalf of Police General Aswin Kwan Mueang, Governor of Bangkok, have the great honor and pleasure to deliver the congratulatory remark in the opening ceremony of the 5th WIGO General Assembly today. I wish to convey my sincere congratulations to WIGO on the occasion of the 10th anniversary of the formal establishment of organization and so as the president city on hosting this event. It is unfortunate that we cannot have an exchange of visit and meet each other because of the pandemic of COVID-19, which is still considered a major challenge for all countries worldwide. Bangkok is one of the founding members and therefore has been involved with WIGO since its inception. The Bangkok Metropolitan Administration, or the BMA, has continuously participated in the programs organized by WIGO, such as e-government training program, smart sustainable city training program, WIGO Asian Smart Cities Network Mero Conference, 
and the other activities or events which are very beneficial and useful. The BMA has set a goal to develop Bangkok into a world-class smart city. In doing so, the BMA has formulated a strategic plan on digital technology in different contexts. Under Bangkok's ICT Master Plan, 2018 to 2022, including developing digital skills and attitude of its personnel and the people of Bangkok, prescribing digital technology standard for management, developing infrastructure for digital technology to support the digital metropolis transformation, providing public services through electronic networks efficient services, re-engineering the organization to be rapidly responsive, developing innovations for digital economy and society, and creating the administration mechanism with transparency and good governance. These are in effort to create an appropriate environment and make preparations to transform the city management to be efficient electronic system as much as possible. We are certain that our participation in any activities organized by WECO will help achieve its technological development goals and bring about driving of the BMA's ICT master plan as well as an advancement of Bangkok as a smart city. Finally, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to all relating parties for the tireless effort of fulfilling this event and my best wishes for every success to the objective among our participating parties. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Governor, for sending very meaningful message. Thank you once again. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'm very proud to introduce the participating cities and regions of today's assembly. We have more than 120 participants present with us today. However, due to the limited time we have, that we will introduce the mayoral representatives and ambassadors um, who are taking part in today's event in the following order. So first of all, mayoral representatives from WIGO member cities, and second, ambassadors to Korea, and lastly, mayoral representatives from non wego members. So representatives will be introduced in the alphabetical order of the city or country that they represent. So we are honored to have today with us the following mayoral representatives and ambassadors. WIGO members in alphabetical order are First of all, we have Kriyan Gyosilapa, Deputy Governor of Bangkok, Thailand. Thank you very much for your participation. And next, we also have Renu Dahal, Mayor of Bharatpur, Nepal. Thank you. Jose Rojas Mendes, Indigenous Mayor of Buenos Aires de Punta Arenas, Costa Rica. Ashok Kumar Bianju Shuresta, Mayor of Dilikil Municipality, Nepal. Thank you very much for your participation. And Ju Suang Dung, Vice Chairman of the Hanoi People's Committee, Vietnam. Thank you. And Francisco Emmanuel Ortega III, Provincial Governor of La Union, Philippines. Merlin Abigail Binai, Mayor of Makati, Philippines. Dong Sang Yu, a mayor of Penang Island, Malaysia. Ricardo Nunes, mayor of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Dato Rosalie, mayor of Subang Prai, Malaysia. Seun O, oh, mayor of Seoul, South Korea. Ikebaya Dashniam, deputy mayor of Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Andy Foster, mayor of Wellington, New Zealand. His Excellency Luis Elique Sobreira, Ambassador of Brazil to Korea. His Excellency Frederico Cuello, Ambassador of the Dominican Republic to Korea. And next, His Excellency Johnny Leynoso, Chief of the Diplomatic Mission of Ecuador to Korea. His Excellency Ahmed Fami Ahmed Sarawakawi, Chartered Affair of the Malaysian Embassy in Korea. His Excellency Bruno Figueroa, 
Ambassador of Mexico to Korea. His Excellency Zakaria Arsadi, Ambassador of Oman to Korea. His Excellency Wilbur Simusa, Ambassador of the Republic of Zambia to Korea. Tata Father Matt Bongo, Mayor of Habudone, Botswana. Ki Jin Tiang, Executive Vice County Mayor of Jinting County, Chengdu, China. Datu Junaidi, Mayor of Kuching, North Malaysia. Yu Kao San, Mayor of Mandalay City, Myanmar. Carlos Armando Martinez, Mayor of Nicoya, Costa Rica. Eun Hee Jo, District Mayor of Socho District, Seoul, South Korea. Next, Won O Chong, District Mayor of Songdong District, Seoul, South Korea, is also joining us. Last but not least, Pu Gong Bin Nabong, Vice Mayor of Bien Chang, Laos, is also joining here with us today. Thank you once again for your participation and the time today, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, I'd like to invite Ms. Maimuna Mahat Sharif, the Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlement Program, or UN Habitat, and a former mayor of Subudang Prai and Penang Island, both Uyghur members, in order to deliver the keynote speech. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming her. Honorable mayors and governors, distinguished representative of Uyghur members, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. I would like to thank Mr. O. Si Hun, Mayor of Seoul and President of Uyghur for inviting me to speak at this important occasion. First of all, I would like to congratulate Vigo on the 10th anniversary and you have certainly achieved a lot in your first decade. Before I became the Executive Director of UN Habitat, I was a Mayor of Sebrang Prai and Penang Island, who are both Uyghur members. And I witness the work we go does and its strong commitment to assist the digital transformation of cities. So in the last 18 months, since the start of COVID-19 pandemic, the world has gone through a digital transformation faster than anything that has come before it. Hundreds of millions are teleworking, assessing education virtually and buying goods and services through apps and digital platforms. However, this digital transformation has further exposed serious urban and digital inequalities. Many people in deprived urban areas are not able to assess remote education, telemedicine and teleworking because of weak, absent or unaffordable internet connectivity, or simply lack of computers. According to our colleague at the International Telecommunication Union, 3.6 billion re people remain offline worldwide. Uyghur's vision of creating smart, sustainable cities for all, making use of digital technology to improve the quality of life for all urban residents while ensuring long-term economic, social and environmental sustainability has never been more important. Such vision requires us to put inclusion, human rights and the needs of people front and center in our digital transformation efforts. We need to focus on using the opportunities provided by digital technologies to build inclusive and resilient urban communities that make a positive impact on people's life. At UN Habitat, we define this as people-centered smart city. Smart city reduces the digital divide, builds inclusion and respects digital rights. It requires changing our mindset away from using smart technologies for surveillance and control to using smart technologies to enable urban life and make our cities better. While digital technologies are important, 
we need to combine our digital efforts with good neighborhood planning, non-motorized transport, green public spaces, and renewable energy in a smart city approach that is inclusive, sustainable, and contributes to improve urban quality of life. Our people-centered smart city vision is based on international agreements. The new urban agenda calls for member states to adopt a smart city approach and citizen-centric digital governance. The UN General Assembly resolution on privacy in the digital age calls for states to develop legislation that protects individuals against violations of rights to privacy through the collections of data. And the UN Secretary General's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation sets out a multi-stakeholder effort to advance digital cooperation, universal digital access, digital human rights, digital inclusion, digital public goods, standards of artificial intelligence, and strengthening digital capacity. UN Habitat, in collaboration with organizations such as WIGO, has a key role in the UN system to localize this agenda. We look forward to working together with WIGO to towards a more sustainable and digitized development of cities. Our smart city vision recognizes that there are regional and cultural differences. What is appropriate in Seoul may not be appropriate in Johannesburg or New York. Asian cities may approach digital platforms and data differently than European or Latin American cities. But there is a lot that can be learned from each other. We are just at the beginning of the smart city journey. In that sense, WIGO has similar approaches when addressing regional differences and we hope to further cooperate along these lines with them. But key to success across the world is that local governments become proactive actors in implementing the smart city vision. We need leaders who to take a strategic and informed approach to digital technologies. It's great to see Vigo's membership recognizing this. Having said that, of course, this is a multi-stakeholder effort. The private sector is a fundamentally important actor. It has the skills, resources, innovation capacity, and technology that is required. But it cannot be the only actor. The public sector needs to lead and set the rules of the game to ensure that we move from a private sector supply-driven approach to a needs-driven one. The people-centered smart city should benefit all urban residents and we need to understand and address the digital divide which is not only a divide between rural and urban. As an example, in New York, one of the most connected cities in the world, 1.5 million people do not have fixed or mobile broadband at home. We need to pay particular attention to such underserved populations, the urban poor, older and disabled people, among others. And we need to provide digital literacy training. And we should aim to enhance service provision and digitize government services. Cities should create online platforms that enable residents to apply for business permits, pay tax, apply for planning permission, assess telemedicine, and communicate with policymakers. We need to have digitally enabled mobility services, renewable energy smart grids, and green building technologies. UN Secretary General has called for enhanced global digital cooperation. So within the smart cities field, 
global guidelines on things like data sharing, interoperability, and technical standards will benefit cities, countries, and companies alike. UN Habitat has been a co-lead of the UN United for Smart Sustainable Cities platform for several years. We have now strengthened our partnership with the International Telecommunications Union and we stand ready to provide a global platform to discuss global cooperation on smart cities. I see Vigo as a key potential partner in this important effort and look forward to strengthening our collaboration. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Maimuna Mahad Sharif, for delivering very inspirational and a meaningful keynote speech. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, now we will move on to the fourth Wego Awards ceremony. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, now we will begin the awarding ceremony of the fourth Wego Awards. So, established in 2011, the Wego Award is Wego's triennial competition that recognizes and promotes smart initiatives that use ICT to improve the quality of life of citizens. In 2020, Wego held the fourth edition of the Wego Awards, and from now on, I'd like to introduce six categories. So the categories are, first of all, efficient government with your worst projects that show excellent public service delivery, accountability, service integration, breaking down silos and interoperability. And the next category is emerging technology. Um, it's a category for projects that use the latest ICT innovations such as AI, drones and blockchain. And the third category is mobility category. So this category is for projects related to efficient transportation. An open and inclusive city category for projects focused on citizen participation, open data and privacy, transparency, bridging the digital divide, living labs, and so on. And next, safe city category for projects related to security, emergency, and disaster response. Last but not least, the sustainable city category covers sustainability projects from waste management, water management, circular economy, lighting, buildings, and resources management. So today, we'll be awarding the cities who have submitted exceptional projects in the six different categories of the fourth WIGO Smart Sustainable City Awards. So starting with the efficient government category, the winner of the special mention in this category is Makati City for its Makatizen Card project which consolidates the access to social and financial benefits for citizens. And in order to receive the award, Ms. Malin Abigail Binai, Mayor of Makati City, has joined us today. So as you can see on the screen, congratulations once again, Ms. Binai. Congratulations. And next, we'd like to move on to the Silver Award in this category. So the winner of the Silver Award is Mosco. For the My Mosco application, a solution for citizens in the city to get digital access to a wide range of services. So Mr. Edward Lysenko, head of the Moscow Department of Information Technologies, actually could not join us today in real time. But as you can see on the screen, we do have his photo holding the trophy. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a big round of applause. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, even though we're not together here physically, I hope that you will send a lot of big applause to our winners on your own places. And let's move to our Gold Award in this category. So the Gold Award goes to Koyang Chi. For their Koyang Smart City project, a comprehensive plan making the city smart and implemented through a living lab approach. Congratulations. 
And before we begin, I'd like to invite Wigo's Secretary General, Chong Suk Park, and the Director General of Smart City Policy Bureau, Mr. Chong Suk Park, up on the stage as they will present the award to the winners. So we like to have them on the stage. Please welcome them. And in order to present the award to our gold award winners, we do have Mr. Tong Yok Chui, team leader of Koyang's Urban Development and Smart City Division. So please come up to the stage. So we would like to have the certificate and also in order to um, congratulate them, we also prepared a flower and then we're going to also take a picture. Yes, please. Let's on the show. Congratulations once again. That was the gold winner of Efficient Government category. And we'd like to have a photo session briefly. Please look at the camera. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And now let's hear a few words from Mr. Che. Yes, the floor is yours. 네, 수상 소감을 잠시 말씀해 주시기 바라겠습니다. 네, 어, 감사합니다. Well, thank you very 그, 여태까지 much. 고양시에서 한 스마트 well, 시티 정책에 대해서 어, 인정을 해 주신 것 같아서 너무나도 감사를 드리고요. 어, 저희 고양시는 어, 굉장히 효율적인 운영과 또 안전한 도시에 중점을 뒀습니다. 그래서 작년에 특히 또 어, 미래 사회의 그 주인공인 어린이들을 위한 어, 고양로 안전한 보행로를 위해 so 스마트 IoT 보행로를 중심적으로 이렇게 so 추진을 하여서 어, 또 이렇게 부서 아, 고향 시장님과 부서의 협업을 통해서 이렇게 어, 좋은 상이, 상을 저희가 받게 된것 같습니다. 앞으로 고향시가 고향시의 선진 그 스마트 so 그 행정을 널리 세계에 또 안내하며 so 또 위보의 발전에 노력하도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Congratulations. Thank you very much for your words. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now let's move to the second category. So next in the emerging technology category, the winner of the special mention in this category is Lima. For their visualization of the air quality in the city using low cost sensors and interactive totems. So Ms. Elvira Avila, head of the Environmental Management Office, actually could not join us uh, today, um, but we do have her photo, her holding the certificate, as you can see on the screen. So congratulations once again. Yes, and the winner of the silver award in this category is Jeju Province for their high precision bus location information service which enables users to check the exact location of buses in the city in real time. To receive the award, we have Mr. Chan Hyuk Park, team leader of the Smart City and Drone Division. So congratulations once again, as you can see on the screen, he's joining us via Zoom. Yes. And let's move to the Gold Award. The winner of the Gold Award in this category is Songnam City for their use of drones in solving social issues such as monitoring construction sites and reducing fine dust. So, in order to receive the award, we have Mr. Tong ok Director General um, of the Finance and Economy Bureau. So, please come up to the stage. So, we did prepare um, the certificate for our Gold Award winner. Um, which is Songnam City. So congratulations. 네, 전달해 주십시오. 축하드리겠습니다. Congratulations once again. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause. And then we will have a photo session briefly. Please look at the main camera. Thank you. 네, 고맙습니다. 자리로 이동해 주십시오. And next, we'd like to have some words from Mr. Chun. The floor is yours. Hello, everyone. 
I am Chan Dong Wook from the Finance and Economy Bureau of Songnam City. First of all, I would like to thank the Legal Secretariat and also the President City, Seoul. Thank you very much for this recognition. Now, IT, BT, CT, so we have all these companies in Songnam because we have the Pangyo Techno Valley. So together with this infrastructure, there are also the game contents, biohealth and auto driving. So these are the sectors that where we are leading. So the mayor of Songnamshi, Eunsumi, is now leading the way in this fourth industrial development, and especially utilizing the fourth industrial revolution technologies. We are addressing digital. Uh, we are addressing the natural disasters and also other problems and social issues. So we have been working very hard to utilize these technologies to address the social issues. And down the road, led by the mayor Unsumi, together with the Uyghur members, we will continue to work to become a digital smart city. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Once again, congratulations to the winners. And ladies and gentlemen, let's move to the third category, which is mobility category. So the winner of the special mention in this category is Teran for their interactive bike application designed to facilitate and increase the share of cycling in the city. To receive the award, Dr. Mohamed Farjud, CEO of the Tehran Municipality Information and Communication Technology Organization, is joining us today, as you can see on the screen. So he is online. So thank you very much for your participation and congratulations. And let's move to the Silver Award. The winner of the Silver Award in this category is Balo Harijanti for their free mobility app SIU Mobile that offers public transport users the best options for the trips they are about to make. But unfortunately, we do, don't have any representative joining us from Bella Hurijanti in real time. But as you can see on the screen, we have a photo highlighting the project team with the certificate. Congratulations once again. And then let's move to Gold Award. So Gold Award winner is Georgetown for their green connectivity project, which includes various mobility solutions related to parking, bike lanes and shuttle buses, among others, towards a sustainable and livable city. The mayor of the city council of Penang Island, Datu Yu, has joined us live today. So congratulations once again, as you can see, he is online. And in order to receive the certificate on behalf of Georgetown, we have the charge of the fear from the Malaysian Embassy in Seoul. Mr. Ahmad Fami Ahmad Sarkawi on the stage today. So please come up to the stage once again. Yes, we have gold certificate for Georgetown. Congratulations once again. And we do also prepare the flower for our gold award winner. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause and we will take a photo session. Please look at the main camera. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And now, let's hear a few words from the winner, Dr. Yu, Mayor of the City Council of Penang Island. And we have a video from him, so let's take a look at it. The City Council of Penang Island is very honored to win the gold medal for our green connectivity project under the mobility category at the fourth Vigo Awards. Mobility to move people between the city in a green and sustainable manner is an important part of a low carbon city planning and management. It can't be denied that the COVID-19 pandemic has left an impact on many cities, but the City Council of Penang Islands has continued to forge on with its sustainable initiative despite the pandemic. In fact, this is a crucial time to continue to focus on elevating the people's standard of living through efficient, sustainable and inclusive city planning and management. This is why we are now creating a smart digital twin city to manage a city through the use of AI and IoT. 
this digital twin city will allow us to map and plan out mobility solution to connect and move people without impacting on the city's carbon footprint. We have also continued to engage with stakeholders and procure their feedback to include their views into any initiative we introduce. This is to ensure inclusivity and a stronger sense of ownership among the stakeholders in line with SDG 11. Once again, thank you for awarding us the gold medal in the fourth Vigo Awards. We will ensure we continue to stay on par with this award and implement sustainable projects for the future of our city. Thank you very much. We do hear a big applause here on site. Congratulations once again. And moving on to the next category, it's fourth category, which is open and inclusive city category. So the winner of the special management in this category is Sejong. For their Sejong and the project, a smart platform that provides useful information to citizens and proved especially useful during the beginning of the post COVID 19 pandemic. In order to receive the award, Mr. Song Wook Om, Director General of the Smart City Division, is joining us today. So, congratulations. Yes, as you can see, he's showing his certificate. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the silver award in this category. So, the silver award goes to Jakarta for their project aiming at reducing social and environmental problems in the city. Through citizen participation developed with their private sector partner, Kulu. Um, but unfortunately, uh, Mr. Lama Laditya, CEO and founder of Kulu, is not joining us today. But as you can see on the screen, we have his photo holding the certificate. Congratulations for the win. And let's move to the Gold Award category. So, Gold Awards goes to São Paulo with the Free Fab Lab Aspen Network, a living lab project created to reduce the gap of technology access, especially among lower income populations. Unfortunately, Mr. Juan Guidos, a Municipal Secretary of Innovation and Technology, is not joining us today, but we have his photo holding the trophy. Luckily, uh, in order to receive the certificate on behalf of San Paulo, we have the ambassador from the Brazilian Embassy in Seoul, Mr. Luis Enrique Sobreira Lopez, please come up to the stage. Congratulations. Yes, and we do have our certificate for our gold award winner. Congratulations. Yes, let's give a big round of applause. Congratulations once again. And that's prepared by our organization. That's Flower. Let's take a photo all together. So please look at the camera uh, in front of you. That's the main camera. Yes, one more time. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause once again. Thank you, Ambassador. Please return to your seats. Thank you. And now, why don't we hear a few words from the winner, Mr. Juan Quiros? We do have a video, so let's take a look at it. Hello. On behalf of Mayor Ricardo Nunes, I would like to thank WeGo for the gold medal in the open and inclusive city category. In Sao Paulo, we have 13 units of our FabiLab network program, which provides mentoring and free access to the state-of-the-art technology and equipments. Each unit is prepared to help the population in developing their local purpose and their vocation. FabiLab produce range of household items, a low-cost furniture to mold for craft and cooking, even musical instrument. Innovation is in Sao Paulo's DNA. Our management guideline is to include digitally and socially offering support to entrepreneurship from peripheral neighborhoods to the downtown area of our city. Technology that matters for us is the one that transform people's lives. 
This is very important to understand that we are here to transform these people through technology. Congratulations to Yakarta for the data management and transparency policy projects. This award is very relevant because it shows us that we are on the right track to be an even more connected and inclusive city. From here, a strong and virtual hug for every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you so much. We do hear a big hands here on site as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the fifth category, which is safe city category. So the winner of this category, the special mention goes to Kuyang for their smart IoT walkways for pedestrian safety. In order to receive the award, Mr. Chi Ho Shin, Vice Team Leader of the Smart City Team, has joining us today. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, um, he's on Zoom. So, congratulations once again. Yes, and let's move to the Silver Award. The winner of the Silver Award in this category is Balo Harijanti for their product on preventing violent and sexual harassment against women in public transports. But unfortunately, no representatives from Bello Horizonte could join us today. But as you can see on the screen, we have a photo highlighting the project team with the certificate on the screen. So congratulations once again. That was Silver Award. And then let's move to Gold Award in the Safe City category. The winner Gold Award goes to Mexico City for the implementation of an alert system based on the instrument of panic buttons in public transportation, streets, business, and the city's official app. So Mr. Luis Javier Ortega Cisneros, Director for Open Government and Institutional Affairs, has joined us live today, as you can see. So congratulations, Mr. Ortega. Thank you so much. So. Yes, thank you for your wave. And in order to receive the certificate on behalf of Mexico City, we also have the ambassador from the Mexican Embassy in Seoul, Mr. Bruno Figueroa on the stage. Please come out to the stage. And we will also um, hand out the certificate, which is a gold award in the category of Safe City. 네, 전달을 부탁드리겠습니다. Congratulations and please give a big round of applause once again. Congratulations and then we will um, have a time to take a photo together with our presenter. So look at the camera, that's the center one. Yes, one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause once again. Thank you so much. Now, let's hear a few words from the winner um, and a speech from Mr. Emiliano Ischeno, Executive Director for Institutional Operations at the Digital Agency for Public Innovation of Mexico City. So let's get our attention to the screen. Dear WIGO members, this is Emiliano Ischeno, Executive Director for Institutional Operations. On behalf of the Mexico City government, we are grateful for receiving the WIGO Awards in the Safe City category. These recognitions encourage us to move forward with the city's innovation strategy and improving the quality of the life of the residents of our beloved city. Our project, Nisiad Segura, was born out of a growing concern for safety in public transportation and in the streets. This project was designed in order to make sure that every resident of the city, especially women, feels safe in any location and in any time of the day. We are honored for being granted this award. We hope our experience will be useful for other Latin American cities who are facing also these issues of security. We are committed to continue working on the design and implementation of policies regarding public well-being. We are confident that WIGO will provide a valuable platform to continue learning from our international partners. Thank you. Thank you so much once again and congratulations to all of our winners in that category. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done with our awarding ceremony. We do have one more category left. Last but not least, in the sustainable city category, the winner of the special mention in this category is Ishkinder Malaysia for its Sankai Sajid Rejuvenation Project, which resulted in the improvement of water quality, flooding management, and the urban landscape overall. To receive the award, Datuk Ismail Ibrahim is also joining us today. So he is Chief Executive of the Iskandar Regional Development Authority. So as you can see on the screen, he's holding the certificate. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And next, let's move to the Silver Award in this category. The winner of the Silver Award in this category is Mashid. For the CMAP application, a ma waste management project focused on public participation. Abul Fadul Karimian, director of Moshman uh, Municipality's Waste Management Organization, actually is on a uh, Zoom platform, as you can see on the screen. So congratulations once again, and thank you for your time in real time. Congratulations. Yes, and this is the last winner of this year's awarding ceremony. So the winner of the Gold Award in the category of Sustainable City is Istanbul. For their system monitoring ship-generated marine pollution using cameras and drones, so Dr. Asian Ordinkler, Head of Environmental Protection and Control Department, could not actually join us today due to an urgent issue, but as you can see on the screen, we can have her photo. So congratulations once again. Even though the winner cannot uh, be with us in real time, they sent us very special videos. So without further ado, let's take a look at the video. Good afternoon. My name is Professor Dr. Aisha Nergenstein. As the head of Environmental Protection and Control Department of Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality, I'm extremely honored to be receiving such an important award by Vico Association. We are grateful for the recognition we have received for our work, and it is a pleasure to speak here as the winner of the Vico Gold Award. The goal of our award-winning project is to prevent marine pollution from ships by using camera systems and drones in the Bosphorus, which is one of the most important routes in the world. This award also motivates and inspires us to develop our winning project and encourages us for our next projects. Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality aims to use radar systems and thermal cameras by following advanced technologies with integration of the drone technologies for sustainable marine environment. Now, I would like to thank the Vigo General Assembly for organizing this award ceremony and my team at Directorate of Marine Services for their efforts. Latest, I would like to congratulate the 10th anniversary of Vigo General Assembly. Thank you. Thank you so much for sending very special video from Istanbul. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to take a group photo with all of the representatives present here with us today. So congratulations to all of the winners again, and please come up to the stage for the group photo session. So as you can see, we're having all of our delegates and representatives of each city and country. And for your information, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take two photo shots. So first of all, we're going to take with our online participants and then we're going to have with our offline only participants. So please show your certificate. Look at the camera. Please look at the centered camera. And those who are joining us online, you're also taking photo with all of us. So please make a big smile. Yes, even though we're wearing masks, we can see you're smiling. So look at the camera. Yes, and then we're going to take one more with our slogan, which is the fourth we go over ceremony. So look at the camera once again. Thank you so much. Please give a big round of applause to all of our winners and representatives. Thank you. 
please return to your seats. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for more information about each project, please refer to the program book which contains short summaries. Or you can also go to Wigo's YouTube channel and watch the recordings of the Meet the Webinars, Winners webinars held in August and September this year as well. And ladies and gentlemen, for the next session, the General Assembly session, we would like to have a short break about five minutes, and we would like to come back in five minutes. See you shortly. Thank you for your kind cooperation.
So esteemed members and partners of WIGO, good afternoon and welcome back to the 5th WIGO General Assembly. Now we'd like to move on to the WIGO General Assembly agenda session, where the key decisions on WIGO's direction for the next three years will be made. So from the President's city, the Ambassador for International Relations of Seoul Metropolitan Government, Tia Peck, will be the chair of this General Assembly session on behalf of the President. And for her brief introduction, Ambassador Beck has served in the diplomatic service for Korean government for more than 25 years. Ms. Beck was the ambassador and deputy permanent representative of the Korean permanent mission to the United Nations in New York, and was the ambassador to Geneva, and also had joined in many other international organizations. So from now on, I would like to yield the floor to the Ambassador Chia Peck representing the Seoul Metropolitan Government, the President's City of Uigo, to chair the 5th Uigo General Assembly. So Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, Uigo members. It is my delight to welcome you to the 5th Uigo General Assembly. Today, we will cover a total of seven agendas in accordance with the Uigo status, tuts, City members shall have the right to take part in discussion, vote, approve, decide on, and confirm in the General Assembly. Corporate and friendship members may present their opinions. As the chair of today's meeting, I ask for your kind cooperation in leading a productive discussion. I would like to invite Secretary General Park to give a brief explanation about the online General Assembly and online voting of the agenda. Thank you, Ambassador Park. Uh, good afternoon, WIGO members and partners. Thank you very much for your presence with us at the fifth WIGO General Assembly. As a new Secretary General, I'm excited to meet you all today. Unfortunately, we can only meet virtually this time. However, I do believe we will be able to meet in person soon. Taking advantage of the first online General Assembly, on the online General Assembly agenda, voting was conducted prior to the hosting of the General Assembly to ensure the number of quorums required to have the General Assembly agenda adopted. As you may well know, uh, the fifth week of General Assembly agenda have been circulated to all members weeks before today's meeting for the online voting and members' feedback and comments have been collected. A total of 44 members voted for the fifth WIGO General Assembly agenda, and each of the proposed agendas were agreed. As we discussed, the result of the voting today, I encourage members to voice their comments with all members today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary General Park. Uh, we will now officially begin our discussion on seven important WIGO agendas. The first agenda is an overview of the WIGO EXCOM meeting that was conducted on the 5th, 14th of October prior to the GA session. I'd like to invite SG Park to brief us on the outcomes of the EXCOM meeting. Yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, first, annual assessment of WIGO regional office. Uh, we last Thursday uh, on 14th of October, WIGO EXCOM meeting 2021 was conducted with the presence of 10 EXCOM members cities. Today, we, I will present the outcomes from the meeting. The first one, uh, annual assessment of WIGO regional office. The performance of the WIGO five regional offices were evaluated based on the WIGO activities conducted by the uh, respective region in the previous year and new WIGO members and partners acquired. Financial stability and prospects for the next year, relationship with the WIGO secretariat and members in the region and their commitment to promoting smart sustainable urban development in the region. The executive committee conducted the annual assessment. 
and of Uyghur regional offices share the recommendation for improvement and approved the continuation of five regional offices operations for the next year. Second, the election of the host city of Axcom meeting 2020. Kampala in Uganda was selected as the host yeah, city of Axcom meeting 2020. And for more detailed information on AXCOM agenda, <laughs> please refer to AXCOM memorandum that will be shared with members on WIGO official website. Thank you. And third one, introduction of a differentiated service based on membership fee, payment, status, and incentives to members with good membership records. Another important agenda discussed during the ASCA meeting was introduction of a differentiated service to members based on membership fee, payment status, and activities. Uh, to ensure fairness of the organization, stimulate motivations, and increase the membership fee, payment rate, and more service and opportunities will be provided to members with a history of activeness and good payment record. And they will be recognized as a lower model member of a V group. Lastly, membership status. This year, a total of five new membership were approved, contributing to total number of 230 members. Since the last General Assembly in uh, 2017, a total of 93 members have joined WIGO. In specific, 46 local governments, 35 corporations, and 12 institutions have been approved to become WIGO members. Also, nine cities that withdraw from the membership. Many of the new members are here today at this General Assembly. We are delighted to welcome you to the organization and are looking forward to WIGO continuous growth with our new members. Thank you. Thank you. It is great to hear that WIGO membership is growing at such fast rates against the hardship we face today with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. As a representative of the President City of WIGO, I sincerely welcome many of our new members who are here with us today and their first participation in the WIGO General Assembly. There are also many partners and yet to be member cities here and I encourage everyone to join our growing WIGO family and shape the direction of smart cities together. Let us move to the second agenda, reporting on the WIGO 2030 master plan. The second agenda concerns WIGO's master plan for the next decade. The smart city <coughs> landscape has changed since WIGO's founding in 2010. Especially with the outbreak of COVID-19, the importance of digital platforms has been emphasized and the acceleration of digital transformation is taking place globally. To meet the new challenges ahead, WIGO has updated its direction and goals. I would like to invite Ms. Elena Jo, Head of Program Department, to brief us on the details. Ms. Jo. Thank you, Ambassador Park. Uh, good afternoon, members and partners. I am Elena. It's my greatest pleasure to greet all of our members again at our fifth General Assembly. I'm happy to present WIGO's 2030 Master Plan to our members. With the global pandemic, it has truly been a difficult year for many of our members, but overcoming the challenges, it has shed light on the importance of digital transformation once again, and opened a new way for the world to be connected. The WIGO 2030 Master Plan builds on these directional changes, introduces a clear strengthening of WIGO's ambitions, and sets out how they will be achieved. As SG Park has explained, the WIGO 2030 Master Plan has been circulated to all members weeks before today's meeting, 
Feedback and comments were collected, and all of the members who took part in the online General Assembly agenda voting were supportive of the overall direction. Uyghur's 2030 vision will be to become the world's foremost smart sustainable cities organization. By 2030, smart sustainable cities will be synonymous with Uyghur, and the brand of the organization will be extensively recognized as a mover and shaker for smart cities around the world. To meet this vision, Uyghur will operate under the framework of five missions, and I will elaborate on the action plans that will be undertaken over the coming years achieve these missions. First, strengthen benefits and service to our members. Capacity building opportunities will be expanded to enable members to be adaptive to the advanced technologies and trends in smart city development. Starting from next year, in cooperation with five regional offices, we will develop region-focused training programs and with an expanded partnership, Study visit programs will be organized to provide more hands-on experience to our members. Empowerment of members will take place by planning and executing our services in a demand-driven manner by facilitating regular communication with members. A new communication platform will be introduced which enables direct communication among Uyghur members as well as between the Secretariat and members. Taking today's opportunity forward, I'd like to encourage active participation and feedback from our members who are here today on this initiative. Also, a co-presidency framework will be introduced to share the prestige over the leadership of the organization as one of the leading smart cities of the world. Any ambitious cities committed uh, with the smart cities uh, leading resources to drive the expansion of the organization will have the opportunity to join these forces. We welcome the cities who are present here today to review and taking this opportunity forward. Second mission is the digital transformation of Uyghur's programs and services. As the world moves online in the new normal, Uyghur will stay ahead of the curve by carrying out a range of webinar series and digitizing a new existing services with a broader group of stakeholders. This will promote faster growth at lower expense and extend the organization reach to locations where its physical presence is less established. Uyghur will also expand its Smart City Driver program. More cities, urban challenges, and available solutions will be achieved to enable identification of collaboration opportunities, as well as assisting cities on how to move forward with the shared challenges and strategic partnership for bankable projects and for cities' project implementations. Third, Uyghur will focus on geographical and sectoral growth. To achieve the strategic goal of worldwide organization, we will expand the membership and partnership to ensure geographical representation and worldwide collaboration among members and partners. Acknowledging the different characteristics and needs in each region around the world, we will expand its regional network so that they serve as a platform to extend knowledge and foster regional cooperation on smart cities. We will expand Wiggles global outreach with support from regional offices and through Wiggles regional networks. We plan to open new regional offices in Southeast Asia, Europe, the Middle East, and North America to target new memberships and partnership into the organization, contributing to the diversity and enrichment of the contents. Fourth, building citizen-centric smart cities. As the world continues to find solutions to the unprecedented challenges, it has become more important than ever for cities to embrace resilience and sustainability at a personal and societal level. WIGO will lead citizen participation in building smart cities by creating opportunities where citizens can be more active and devoted in bringing smart, sustainable cities. New activities and programs targeted to interact with citizens will be carried out to deliver Wigo's vision and mission to the citizen level. Lastly, but most importantly, strengthening the financial resources will be Wigo's core mission in the coming decade. Wigo will expand the sources of revenue from a dependency on annual contributions and membership fees to include additional member contributions for value-adding services. These include voluntary contributions from corporate members where Wigo has supported successful matchmaking 
a grant from institutions and investors for co-finance joint programs or to facilitate member cities smart city project implementations. In line with the direction of WIGO's 2030 master plan, major programs have been planned for 2021 to 2023. Taking the opportunity forward, I'd like to encourage all of our members present here today to take advantage of the in-reach programs and services provided to you and hope to see you more often in our programs. Now, I return the floor to Ambassador Peck for the formal approval of this agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jo. Before we move to formal approval on the WIGO 2030 Master Plan, I invite members to share their comments on this important agenda. I would like to invite His Excellency Andy Foster, Mayor of Wellington, to share his comment as one of the newest members of WIGO. Mr. Mayor. Um, <laughs> greetings, uh, Mayor Oh Si Hoon, and, and greetings, Honorable Mayors, Ambassadors, and distinguished participants. Uh, we in Wellington greatly value our special relationship, particularly with Seoul, and congratulations and thank you for your generous international leadership, especially in digital technology. There's no doubt that today, more than ever, we need to tackle global challenges through global collaboration. Of course, we face together the global COVID pandemic, and we must also work together to tackle the challenges arising from the pressure that we together are putting on the planet, climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution, resource depletion, food insecurity, and water supply. Innovation and technology will play a key role in our response to these global challenges. It was inspiring to hear earlier of some of the diverse innovations of tonight's award winners and the difference this is making in people's lives. I want to share with you just briefly a little of the development of Wellington's smart city status. Earlier this year, Wellington was announced as one of 50 cities that are finalists in the Bloomberg Philanthropies Global Mayors Challenge. Our mission is to uncover transformative solutions to issues facing cities in a world of increasing challenges. Wellington is now further developing our digital twin city project, utilizing advanced gaming technology to create large scale city visualizations comprising integrated and real time data. The digital twin will bring together technology, urban planning, transport, climate science, city safety, and citizen engagement on a platform designed to enhance public agency and stakeholder collaboration as we work together to co-design the future of our city as a growing, evolving, sustainable capital city. I look forward to future WeGo forums where we can share more of our collective stories and learn from each other's innovations and successes as together we build a smart, inclusive, environmentally resilient cities for our children and for generations to come. Gamsa <laughs> Hamida. Thank you, Mayor Foster. Uh, now I'd like to invite Ms. Li Li, Vice Director General of the Foreign Affairs Office uh, of uh, Chengdu to share her uh, comment as a representative of one of Uyghur's regional offices. Thank you. So, Secretary General Park, dear Uyghur members, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and a good evening from Chengdu, China. It's a great pleasure to meet with WIGO members and this special triennial get together and to work with you on the key decisions that will set the future directions of WIGO. Chengdu joined the WIGO family in 2012 and has served as an XCOM member and the WIGO RO since 2030. Oh, sorry, 2013. Over the years, we have grown together with the organization and have witnessed many milestone moments together. We believe WIGO's 2030 master plan will continue to guide the organization to achieve greater heights. WIGO's 2030 master plan has outlined its mission to build citizen-centric smart cities. This has been Chengdu's priority as well. As a megacity with a population of well over 20 million, 
Smart technology is part and parcel of our urban governance and public service delivery. The term citizen-centric, in other words, people-centered, making citizens have a strong sense of fulfillment, happiness, and security. It's fundamental to Chengdu's urban policy making and governance. On 9th December this year, Chengdu RO will host a webinar on creating citizen-centric smart cities. We will share our experience in the field of e-governance and citizen engagement. And we warmly welcome representatives from WIGO member cities to share your best practices and experience using ICT and smart tools to bring together different stakeholders to engage citizens in urban management. Detailed program information will be sent to you shortly, and please kindly save the date. The pandemic has greatly challenged the on-site programs. Over the past two years, we have grown accustomed to online events. To digitize programs and services is another important task presented in the master plan. As a WIGO RO, Chengdu will work with the WIGO Secretariat to match this ambition with real-world outcomes. We hope to develop more quality online training programs and webinar series. In the meantime, we look forward to working with the member cities to make the most of WIGO's online exchange platforms, such as WIGO Activator and WIGO Project Catalog to power mutual learning and reinforce WIGO's mission to provide smart, sustainable solutions to urban development. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lee. Uh, now I'd like to invite um, the um, governor of La Union uh, to take the floor, please. Thank you very much, ma'am. Honorable governors, mayors, and esteemed members of WIGO. Greetings from the province of La Union. Our provincial government is advocating for transformative governance agenda through the stronger La Union strategy. And we believe that alignment is key for us to bring about high impact breakthroughs that will improve the quality of life of the people. In this regard, we earnestly welcome the initiatives indicated in the WIGO 2030 Master Plan, especially the digital transformation of programs and services, and building a citizen-centric smart cities as we are strengthening our e-governance capacities and empowering our citizens through program and policy development. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. And are there any further comments? Nope. Are there any objections? I saw a hand raised there, Yoshi Kang. Can you give a spotlight to Yoshika, please. Not this screen. <laughs> 네, 반갑습니다. 저는 서울 디지털 대단 이사장 yes, 강유식입니다. 아, 저는 그 우리 그 이거 후에 중장기 그 기본 계획 관련돼서 간단하게 well, 말씀드리겠습니다. 아, 저는 도시간 정부 교류를 통해서 스마트 솔루션의 도입과 확산이 촉진되기 위해서는 이거의 역할이 중요하다고 생각을 합니다. 특히 메타버스는 지금껏 경험하지 못한 새로운 솔루션을 제공할 것이고 공공 영역에서도 
몇달 콘서트 도입은 unprecedented 필수가 될 것입니다. 여기 참석하신 모든 분들께서도 몇달 콘서트에 관심을 가지고 계실 것으로 생각을 합니다. 서울 시와 서울 디지털 재단도 몇달 콘서트 기본 계획을 수립하고 몇달 콘서트 플랫폼을 활용한 스마트 솔루션 제공을 준비하고 있습니다. 서울의 And also, we do hope to share our experience in metaverse through we go down the road. Thank you very much. Well, I guess he was the last speaker on this agenda. And uh, well, so the General Assembly approves the WeGo 2030 master plan and its three year plan for 2021 to 2023. Thank you. Now let us move on to the third agenda, approval of WeGo statute amendments. Agenda three is the proposal to amend WeGo statute to align with the newly approved WeGo 2030 master plan. Now I ask um, Ms. Jo to kindly brief us on the details, please. Thank you, Ambassador Pack. Uh, the Uyghur statute proposal has been circulated to all members weeks before today's meeting. Feedback and comments were collected and all of the members who took part in the online General Assembly agenda voting were supportive of overall direction. I will go over the summary of the suggested proposal to our members here today. Since 2010, uh, when our organization statutes were formally adopted by 50 founding member cities, we have continued to update and refine our statute at each General Assembly in order to reflect the progress of our organization and the changing times. Some of the highlights of the change include, as the World Friendship Member category leaves a vagueness in, in defining the types of members eligible for this category, Friendship member category has been renamed as institutional member, distinguishing the types of subject to the membership. New article was added to enable EXCO members to have the rights to discuss the options of remit and reduce the membership fee of any member for the purpose of alleviating their economic and financial hardship. In addition to these efforts to better communicate with members, suspension and termination of membership can be discussed to address inactive members with non-payment records. Membership fee scale was adjusted for all three categories to align members' financial capacity with a special consideration to less populated cities under 199,000 people and startups with less than 20 employees. New articles were added to welcome the co-presidency framework to open doors for flexibility in accepting the co-presidency. More details on this framework will be elaborated in the coming years so that by the next General Assembly in 2023, we may welcome the election of the co-president cities. In consideration of highlighting the representativeness of the position in the organization, the number of vice president cities have been reduced to two cities from a minimum of five cities, and the number of excom members have been reduced to 15 cities from a maximum of 20 cities. Only the most active and role model members will be able to enjoy the benefits and prestige of being vice presidents and excom members of the organization. I will now yield the floor back to the chair of the General Assembly for the formal adoption of the changes. Ambassador Peck. Thank you, Ms. Cho. Before we move to formal approval on the Uyghur Statutes Amendment, I invite all members to share their comments on this important agenda. Are there any uh, comments or any objections? I see none. So, uh, Uh, uh. Hello. So the General Assembly. Is there any comment? Any comment? Anyone wish to take the floor on this matter? I, I see none. So, mm -hmm. I think we can move on with the. So now, um, yeah. So. Um, So the General Assembly approves the changes to the statute as presented. Let us move uh, on to the fourth agenda, the election of the next president city. 
Agenda four is the election of the next present city. I would like to invite the Secretary General Park to brief us on the details. Thank you, Ambassador Park. Agenda four is the election of the next president city for term of 2021 to 2023. A call was made to all Uyghur members searching for candidates for the president city on 9th June this year. But the Seoul Metropolitan Government was the sole candidate for the president city. Seoul's candidacy for president city has been circulated to all members weeks before today's meeting, and all of the members who took part in the online General Assembly agenda voting were supportive of the direction. As Seoul has taken the lead in funding and managing the organization as its president, it is suggested that Seoul continue to serve the role to maintain operational co continuity of the organization. Taking opportunity forward, I would like to draw attention to Seoul's dedication and commitment to our organizations and especially to Mayor O, the current and founding president of WeGo, for his continued support for the organization. So I will yield the floor to the Ambassador Pack for the former adoption. Thank you uh, for the explanation. And are there any comments uh, on this matter from the floor? No, no. Any congratulations? <laughs> so, um, well, with your blessing, with your blessing, I now confirm Seoul as the next present city of Vigo. Congratulations, Seoul. We have the Director General of Smart City Policy Bureau, Mr. Park Jong Su here with us today. As the representative of the re-elected present city of Wigo, I would like to invite Director General Park to the stage. Yep. Please welcome him. Thank you, all members of Wigo. Uh, it's been a great honor for Seoul to serve as a president city of Wigo for the past years. I gladly welcome the invitation to serve another opportunity as a president city for the term of 2021 to 2023. So we'll do our best to play a leading role of the organization, promote and support vigorous activities and help our member cities pursue the smart, sustainable development for the welfare of the citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen and uh, participants who are joining from home and abroad, please give a big round of applause once again to Seoul Metropolitan Government to be selected as present city. So ladies and gentlemen, why don't we give a big round of applause? Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, thank you. I sincerely believe as one of the leading smart cities of the world, Seoul will be able to contribute so much more to the organization and share its experience with Uyghur members around the world. Let us move on to the fifth agenda. The fifth agenda item is the appointment of the next vice president cities. I would like to invite S.G. Park to brief us on the details. S.G. Park. Thank you, Ambassador Park. Uh, now, for the matter of appointing vice president cities, according to our status as the reappointed president, Seoul has the duty to appoint not less than five vice president cities. So at this time, I will yield the floor to Ambassador <laughs> Peck as a representative of a president city for the official appointment, Ambassador Peck. 
Thank you, uh, Secretary General Park. Uh, on behalf of uh, Seoul Metropolitan Government, the Uyghurs re-elected present city, I would like to officially appoint the next vice president cities in accordance with our statutes. Uh, among the cities that have been nominated by the executive committee, Seoul has elected to appoint the following six vice president cities in alphabetical order. Beolu, Chengdu, Makati City, Mexico City, Moscow, Seberang Perai. At this time, as representative of the present city and the chair of the meeting, I officially confirm the appointments of the new vice president cities. Please give our new vice presidents a round of applause. <laughs> well, all vice president cities are invited to comment on their appointments for the term 2021 to 2023. So I guess the first speaker will be Tato Rosali. Yes. Honorable <laughs> mayors, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Surveyor Haji Rosali bin Haji Muhammad, Mayor of Sabran Pride, Malaysia. I would like to thank you, Wigo, uh, and Wigo President City, Mayor O. Si Hun, of Seoul Metropolitan Government, and Wigo Member Cities for placing your confidence and trust in me and Sabran Pride to serve as Vice President. We accept this important role of Uyghur Vice President for the term 2021-2023. This is a responsibility that we do not take lightly. We will give full support and would love to see the support from members all over the world. We will strive to facilitate local government to overcome the challenges city face today and helps transformation of city to smart, sustainable cities worldwide. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Ms. Jung Su Fak for the appointment of new Secretary General of Vigo. And I also would like to thank our outgoing Vice President and outgoing Secretary General, Mr. Yu Li and the team for all their contribution and hard work that put in. Sincerely from me, Dr. Surveya Haji Rosali. Thank you. Thank you again. We are delighted to, to have uh, Seberang Parai appointed as a Vice President City of Vigo. Uh, would any other Vice President Cities want to make a comment? And in the meantime, I understand that Mayor of Makati uh, is ready to make comments. Please, Mayor of Makati. Good day to everyone. Uh, greetings to all the WeGo officials and members. First, I would like to thank the executive committee members and fellow members of WeGo for electing his vice president. I humbly accept the responsibilities that come with the position and I will do my best to do justice to your vote of confidence. Once again, I wish to extend my warmest welcome to our new members of WeGo from other countries and regions who have decided to add their voices to the growing clamor for urgent climate action around the globe. We encourage you to take an active part in our discussions as every opportunity, as at every opportunity so that together we can come up with more concrete and actionable plans that will put our cities, cities squarely on the path of green recovery towards sustainable and inclusive development. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Binai. Um, and thank you for your commitment to WIGO. Uh, would any other Vice President uh, wish to make a comment? No. Mm, if not, yeah. yes, I would like to, please. Uh, Bayolu. Mayor of Bayolu, please. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Ambassador Park. Um, dear mayors, dear ambassadors, um, and dear Secretary General, um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, it will be an honor for us to serve as Vice President for the term 2021-2023. Um, so we are aware of our responsibilities and we will do our best to um, to make to make everything um, to to raise actually to increase the the number of the um, members in our region uh, and contribute as much as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, all I thank all vice president cities uh, for sharing uh, your commitment to furthering Vigo's mission, and I hope that we can together build smart, sustainable cities for all citizens. Uh, to this end, Seoul looks forward to serving alongside the new Vice President cities. Uh, let us move to the next agenda. The sixth agenda concerns the election of new Executive Committee members. I now invite SG Park to kindly brief us on the details. Thank you, Ambassador Park. Uh, according to the Uyghur status, uh, any member city may join the executive committee by notifying the secretariat in writing of its candidacy two months prior to general assembly. Members of executive committee shall be elected by the general assembly in accordance of active participation in the organization's activities, membership fee payment status, and equitable geographical distribution as much as possible. On the slide, you will see the 17 executive committee member candidates for the term from 2021 to 2023. These candidate cities have been active in their support toward the Uyghur, and I am proud to nominate them to this assembly for approval. Uh, the candidacy for 17 cities have been circulated to all members weeks before today's meeting, and all of the members who took part in online General Assembly agenda voting were supportive of the direction. Now, I would like to turn the floor back to our chair for the formal approval. Ambassador Peck. Please. Thank you, SG Park. Uh, I'm happy to announce the following 17 candidate cities in alphabetical order to serve as the executive committee members. Abuja, Bayolu, Chengdu, Dulikel, Hebron, Kampala, Makati City, Maputo, Mexico City, Moscow, Sao Paulo, Seberang Perai, Songnam City, so, uh, Seoul, Ulaanbaatar, uh, Ulyanovsk region, and Wellington. I invite all members to share their opinions on the nominated cities before we move for approval. Are there any comments? No. No. Seems. The nominations are uh, being supported by all members. So, uh, the fifth Uyghur General Assembly approves the appointment of these new executive committee members for the term 2021 to 2023. Please give our new executive committee members a round of applause. Are there any, uh, any uh, uh, executive, new uh, executive committee member uh, who wish to uh, take the floor on, at, at this moment? Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, I have a list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'd like to invite uh, Mayor of Dulikel, Mayor Bianju uh, Sheresta uh, from uh, uh, Dulikel. Would you like, to, um, yeah, please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, dear distinguished guests and participants, 
I personally warm namaste. This is Ashok Kumar Benju Swastra, Mayor of Tulikan Municipality, President of the Municipal Association of Nepal, and the President of the United City Local Government, SPAC. I am very thankful for the organizer who gave me time to place me words and this assembly regarding comment from the executive committee member. I hope the attachment is the organization may further enhance us to share and learn knowledge and, and have some expectations from this valuable forum as well. Once again, thank you so much for we go talk, talking to Rikel as the educated member for the term 2021 to 2022. We having that his this will establish good relations between the organization and the facilitated body to will, will be in the front from the carrying out the work under it. In Turikel, we are moving forward with local good governance as such a possible. For this, we are hearing the different programs by formulating desired plan and policy. Thus, actions are fully covered, upgrading of the living standard of the people, including quality education, better health facilities, social empowerment, property relax, elevation, implementation oriented activities and so on besides this we have already for, for made different council like women council disabled council dalit council trivis council and the youth council also they are moving ahead by the formulating necessary policy to develop this skill and ability and also empowering empowering them thought related training and the in, in closing, in the same way, Rikel is also focusing development of tourism promoting activities with construction of the various park trekking trails, also for the disabled people, promoting our culture and historical heritage site, emphasis on the making the city green, including place of clean, in order to make effectively tourism activities in the city. The respective tourism committee has been already established and uh, and is functioning properly. I hope this formulate committee under Uigo would provide better environment for the cities for sharing experience, best practices between the city and the overall developing model among the national and international cities. Lastly, I wish all all of us good health on this pandemic situation and the successful completion of this event. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Now I give the floor to the representative of Ulaanbaatar. You have the floor, sir. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, on behalf of Ulaanbaatar City officials and myself. I would like to express a deep appreciation to all of you for joining the 5th Vigo General Assembly. It's my great pleasure to note that Ulaanbaatar City joined the Vigo International Organization in 2012 and joined Vigo International in 12 and was appointed as a member of Executive Committee Science, Science 2013. 2013. During that period, we successfully participated in the international trainings and meetings which originated. And we go learn about the best practice and governance and share experiences with cities around the world. In the scope of uh, e governance, development of land waters is working to improve the flow and access of information governmental organizations. Private public services citizens quickly uh, organize urban planning uh, using advanced technology solutions. Increases citizen involvement uh, in government decision making 
answer transparency and accountability and private uh, transportation and city capital city. Mita aims improve transport system by using technology and introduce uh, in comprehensive solution and interactive project one mind unified system is started implemented in the Ulaanbaatar city. Therefore, uh, we will always open and grateful to share experience with you. We will wish all cities around the world successfully overcome the pandemic COVID-19 and meet face to face in the next general assembly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now I give the floor to the representative of Kampala. Please take the floor. Uh, distinguished uh, mayors and guests, uh, my name is Martin Sekaja, CIO of Kampala. I bring you greetings from Kampala. I want to very much uh, appreciate uh, the WIGO membership uh, members for voting us, voting Kampala to be part of the EXCO members. And on that note, uh, also allow us to congratulate each one of us uh, for the 10 uh, years anniversary. Um, we've been <laughs> I think we're having bad connection at the moment. Yep. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I, I and uh, we, yep. Now it's revived. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, I was saying on behalf of Kampala, we want to appreciate uh, WIGO for voting us to be part of the uh, XCOM members. And we very much value this partnership uh, because we've been able to uh, transform Kampala into a smarter city, courtesy of uh, WIGO, WIGO's methodology and tools. Uh, we want to extend this partnership and the benefits of this partnership uh, to other cities uh, so that we can grow uh, the membership of WIGO together. And also we want to extend uh, the tools uh, that we've been using in Kampala to other parts of uh, the region. Uh, we very much want to thank you and once again congratulate uh, all members for being part of WIGO for the past 10 years. We hope that we'll have a fruitful uh, partnership ahead of our journey. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the comments. And so we will look forward to serving alongside the new executive committee members. Uh, let's move to the last agenda, agenda seven. Uh, it concerns the confirmation of the host city for the sixth Uyghur General Assembly in 2023. Now I invite uh, SG Park to kindly brief us on the details. Thank you, Chair. Uh, two WIGO member cities have applied to host our next General Assembly in 2023. Mexico City is, and Sao Paulo have expressed their interest in hosting the 6th General Assembly in 2023. According to WIGO's statutes, when two or more cities wish to host the next General Assembly, the city receiving the largest number of votes shall be decided as the next host city. As explained in the beginning of today's meeting, a total of 40 votes were received at the online voting and regarding the agenda and the selection of the host city of six Uyghur General Assembly. As a result, Mexico City has been selected as the next host city of the six General Assembly, with receiving 22 votes from the members. So I now ask Chair to formally announce Mexico City as the selected host city of the sixth Uyghur General Assembly in 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move for final confirmation of the voting results that we, you've just heard, are there any comments from the members? No. 
No. If yeah, if there is no comments, then um, the General Assembly approves the selection of Mexico City as the host city of the Sixth Uyghur General Assembly in 2023. Congratulations to Mexico City. Despite Sao Paulo was not selected uh, this round, I would like to extend a sincere appreciation to Sao Paulo's for its strong commitment and leadership. And we look forward to having the opportunity to work with Sao Paulo as the host city for other Uyghur events in the coming years. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Jose Antonio Merino, head of digital agency for public innovation of the Mexico City to make remarks on their selection as the host city for our sixth general assembly in the year 2023. Dear Uyghur colleagues, this is Jose Marino, head of the Digital Agency for Public Innovation. On behalf of Claudia Sheinbaum, Mayor of Mexico City, we are truly grateful for having the privilege of hosting the 6th Uyghur General Assembly in 2023. Today, more than ever, the cooperation among sectors and countries is vital for the development of cities around the globe. The COVID-19 pandemic has taught us the importance of working together to overcome our obstacles. With these assemblies, we have the opportunity to share knowledge and ideas so we can advance together as one. We look forward to welcome you to our extraordinary city, the most important hub of innovation and digital governance in the region. With significant projects such as the universal free Wi-Fi, soon to be the number one city in the world, and the unified system of citizen attention, which received a lot of support from civil government. We are ready to welcome all of you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you for the remarks. Esteemed members uh, and partners, this was the last agenda of the 5th Uyghur General Assembly. I would like to thank all Uyghur members and partners present here today for shaping the future of Uyghur together. SG Park, before we call it a day, uh, would, you, would you like to share any last um, words with our, not last words, but any comments with yeah. our members? <laughs> thank you very much, Per Chair Ambassador Pack and congratulations to all Uyghur members. And thank you very much for um, passing this important agenda today. This is my first event to meet all of our members. I am honored to serve as, a, as the Secretary General of Uyghur. I have enjoyed every moment today. I hope you have too. As a present in the Uyghur 2030 Master Plan, we have so much to do together in the coming years. While technology is a core part of Uyghur's mission, the global pandemic and climate change have changed, fundamentally refined the relationship between cities and their citizens, 
governments and tech vendors and reformulated the urbanization policy for decades to come. We must embrace resilience and sustainability at a personal and societal level. I'm ready to lead we go into its next phase as an international organization facing new challenges and creating new solutions. WeGo Secretariat is here to help our members transform into smart, sustainable city. Here we go. Thank you. Ashley Park, uh, with your leadership and with the continued support from the present President City Seoul, I do believe WeGo will be the world's foremost smart, sustainable cities organization. I now call this meeting to an end and thank everyone here for their valuable contribution to the meeting. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. We hear a lot of applause here on site. And once again, thank you, Ambassador Peck, and also Secretary General and Ms. Cho for leading the session. And congratulations to WeGo members on passing this important agenda. Well done, everyone, for concluding the fifth WeGo General Assembly. Thank you very much for your active participation once again. And now, as the final program of today's event, I will call all um, ambassadors, governors, vice governors, mayors, vice mayors, a chief information officer, officers and other heads of delegations, uh, please get ready for our last group photo session. And as we mentioned earlier um, at the opening ceremony, uh, we do um, send out um, all of our slogans uh, through email and on our official website. So please have them on standby. Yes, I can see participants online. They're holding their slogans in front of the camera. And we do, um, Ambassador and Ms. Joe and Secretary General, we're also holding this slogan as we are on the stage. So ladies and and gentlemen, please have them. And I like to count down from three to one. But please be careful if you have a virtual background. Please be careful. Do not blend with your background as well. So you ready? Three, two, one. Please look at the camera with the slogan of the fifth Wiggle General Assembly. Yes, please show your slogans, uh, which is printed out. Thank you so much. So distinguished ambassadors, governors, mayors, chief information officers, and other heads of delegations, and ladies and gentlemen, and every participants, will now officially close the assembly. And personally, it was my great honor to be your MC for this special occasion as well. And thank you once again for gracing this, the fifth WeGo General Assembly with your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. And please stay safe and healthy. Hope to meet you again physically. Bye.